you have ever spoken to a group before, I know that it's really great to have everything in order like a week in advance with all the discussion questions and just so organized. But if you've ever spoken to a group, you know, you're up the night before, like refining everything and getting it down to exactly what you want to say. So thank you for being uh, flexible with that. But I think actually what I want to show you just came up this morning in one of my uh, daily emails that I get texted to me, and it just fit really well with our topic today. So um, I'm glad this worked out. Just gonna make sure it's set to go for that moment. Oh, maybe it wants to put it up right away, I'm not sure. So we'll just let it chill there, maybe you'll see. Okay, that's gonna be in a little bit. Well, if you guys remember, uh, we had a discussion last month about the woman at the well. And it's continuing to speak with me or stick with me as I continue to think about um, her experience with Jesus and how he continues to meet us at our time of need. And whenever I need to go back to the well to hear from Jesus again, he's always there ready to speak. Well, I've also been noticing, not only do I want to hear Jesus, but I want to see Jesus. And all of you guys have, well, not all of you, but many of you have glasses as I look out here, so you might be able to relate to this. But I have a thing about vision, and I've got astigmatism in this eye that we've been watching for years with my doctor, and every time I get an eye exam, they see the little thing that's floating in my eye, and I can see that it's just moving around, and we're watching that stigmatism, and the eye doctor told me recently that I have early onset cataracts, and I think he told me that when I was 41, so that kind of felt like, oh my, what's happening to my eyes, and so every year we go back, he checks out my cataract, and he says, well, you'll know when it goes south. Like, all of a sudden, you won't be able to see, and we'll know we need to get in there and get you surgery. So every year, we check it out, and he's like, yeah, you're, it's still good. You still got the original lens in there, so I think we can still work with, with what you got before we have to put something fake in there. So I got new glasses, and I just decided, you know what? If I'm going to wear glasses, I'm going to go all out. So I look for the funkiest, coolest, you know, kind of out there. I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to own it. So I had, got these new glasses three weeks ago. And then we have been doing these adventures with our kids. So we went to Mexico, we went zip lining and played in the ocean and just all did all this fun stuff. And then we went, um, this, last weekend we did cross country ski lessons with the kids. We went bowling. We just got them rollerblades. And... This morning, they were even rollerblading before school. Like, in, they just can't get enough. They have to move their boys. They're six and almost eight. Well, on a snow tubing adventure, I'm going to be the fun mom. I'm going to take the tube down the hill with the kids. I'm all in. And guess what happened to my brand new glasses? <laughs> I had a collision with another mom's hip. <laughs> and literally broke and snapped my glasses in half. And I have a bruise here. I had like a big welt coming out here, like a whole big shiner on my eye, a headache that still kind of like comes and goes, and I had to get new glasses. <laughs> They're the same frames at least. But I just thought how funny and how important our vision is. Yeah. Isn't it? And how, like, okay, there's a reason people wear helmets when they go snow tubing. <laughs> At least they don't have a concussion, you know? Uh, and actually, we're going to talk a little bit more about vision today. And we're going to do that through the story of Bartimaeus. Now, he is in the book of Mark. Um, and he, uh, he's also mentioned in the other Gospels as just the blind man. But in the book of Mark, we get his name, and it's Bartimaeus. Uh, if you have your Bible and you want to read along, uh, I don't have a slide for it, but I do have my Bible here to read it. And just like last time, what I'd like to do is just, if you want to read along, that's great, but if you want to just experience this, then I invite you to actually close your eyes and let God give you a vision or an imagination of what this might have looked like had you been there and witnessed this thing happen. So Mark 
chapter 10, 46. Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Wow. I pulled up some videos, actually, of trying to find that, that one from The Chosen and, you know, any gospel rendition of this story to just, like, feel it myself and see that, too. And to imagine Jesus just walking with his disciples. He was on his way, he was on his mission to get to Jerusalem. And then to just be, like, in this crowd of people see a beggar who probably people paid no attention to, knew he was there, he was just kind of pushed aside, right? nobody cared about him, he was always there begging, who would want anything to do with him? He was blind, he didn't have anything to con contribute to the society, yet it says he's the son of Timaeus, and just a little bit that I've learned about and researched, the son of Timaeus just meant that Timaeus actually was an important person. So he was the son of an important person, and when he called out son of David, he knew that Jesus was an important person who could call, he could call on him to do something. So who knows how he had heard about Jesus, probably the miracles, probably people like the woman at the well who were running around telling all about. So when he heard that he was coming, I wonder if he thought, this could be my chance. That's actually somebody who could do something for me, who could actually change things for me. Like every day I sit here and I beg for food, and this is my life. But what if there's a chance that he could do something for me? So he called out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And did you see everybody around him rebuked him? Like, oh, what a shame. What is, what is, like, no, don't talk, don't call him out, not you. You know, like, be quiet. We want to, no, we don't want to hear your voice. But then it's like something inside of him compels him even more. But maybe he'll hear. So I'm going to call out again. Son of David, have mercy on me. And what I love about what happens next is those two words, Jesus stopped. He got his attention. No one else thought he was worthy of Jesus' attention, but Jesus did, and he stopped. And he said, okay, call him over here. Let me hear what he has to say. And then Jesus, the son of David, the king of the world, the one who we know who's going to do it all, he's on his way to go pay for the sins and make all things new. He's continuing to show that he has power over life and death, and breath, and sight. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? And so he just boldly asks what he wants. I just want to see. And I think you're my only shot. Have you ever had a moment where you thought that same thing? Like, I just want this thing. And I tried everything else. Like, I tried doing it my own way. I tried to go to the doctor and get the surgery. It kind of would be nice not to wear glasses every day. You know, just think I wouldn't have to worry about getting them knocked off or broken. 
I wouldn't have to switch into like my sunglasses and the sunshine. I wouldn't have to like always be ready to like, oh, I can't see you, you know, like to just not have to worry about that. That'd be great. But I tried it my own way. Or maybe there's something in your life that you've just tried your own way. You know, it would just be great if that thing could just be done or gone or just not even an issue anymore. But there's a chance that Jesus could do something about it. What would you ask him? If you got his attention like that, what would you ask for? Are we brave enough to ask God what we really want for? What we really want? I know my prayers are sometimes just a little bit less than that. It's more like, God, help me to accept that I can't change anything. God, help me to like, to just accept your will and to be happy, even though I really want this thing. I'm, I'm not going to ask you for that because that's too much to ask. I'm just, I'm just asking. Now, I believe that there's contentment. I think that we should have gratitude and count our blessings and be happy in God's presence and his like, fulfillment of just being good to us, that we have a future hope. I totally believe in all that contentment. But sometimes I wonder, am I limiting what God would want to do for me just because I don't ask? Now, a couple things I wanted to point out about this, even just to think about the woman at the well and Bartimaeus and to hold those two stories together. These were both people who nobody wanted anything to do with, thought they uh, were nothing. They were the outcasts. They were the people on the margins. They weren't the important religious ones. They weren't the ones standing on the stage. You know, <laughs> they were the ones out there. And Jesus paid attention to them. Like, he came to them, the nobodies. And he lifted their heads, right? So the woman at the well was along her way, and Jesus made sure she ran into him. And Bartimaeus was on the road and saw him and made sure he got his attention. So I think what this shows us, too, is that there's no formula, but that Jesus wants to interact with us. Jesus stopped. So it makes me think of Psalm 139, that God knows you, and he sees you. He sees where you've been and where you're going. He sees it all. And sometimes when I take a, thing, a big pan at my life and look at where it started and where it's going, I'm reminded that God sees all of that at once. And yet this day also has significance. Sometimes it's times where we least expect it, where God comes to meet us at the well. And other times he's passing by and we're just saying, I want your attention. And Jesus stopped. And now think about times where maybe someone is calling out for your attention. So I'm going to take a little side, a little aside here for a moment when I stopped. Um, when I, you know, at Eagle Brook, we have services all weekend long, Saturdays and Sundays, and especially at Christmas and Easter, like we are giving as many services as possible to get as many people in here as we can to hear the word of God. Well, at Christmas, I was leaving um, to come to one of the Christmas services, and my son Ollie said, Mom, are you going to be gone day and night again? And it stopped me. And that is a, it still rings in my ear. And it was almost as if my little Ollie was kind of like a Bartimaeus. Say, Mom, will you, will you stop? Will you be with me? And so um, that has kind of led to some other things. And I'm going to be leaving my position at Eagle Brook in two weeks. Um, so I'm going to get a little emotional. <laughs> um, because just as I felt like God called me to be here and to serve here, and how I've like loved that lobby like nobody's business on the weekends. And I've gotten to be friends with, with you and with many of you closely. Like me being here on this mission with God has kept me 
away from the times when my kids are home. And like I said, they're six and eight, so they're little buddies. <laughs> and they want their mom. And so I'm having a Louise stopped moment. And I'm going to take a pause from the things that I think God has called me to, the, good, the things that he has gifted me for, to be with them. And so I think, like this week, just coming upon this and not even knowing I was going to study this and talk to you about this today, is another way that I think the scripture's been speaking to me too. The interruptions in our lives, the things where we just like think like, oh, you know, I'm trying to get this done. I need to, you know, I'm in, up in the morning, I'm trying to get ready for my day, and I'm, mom, 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 you know, getting interrupted. And to think that that's not, the, like that it's somehow a distraction from God's will might be the actual thing that's calling me to do that. And so... Maybe there's places in your life where you feel like you've been interrupted or you're just trying to get something done and somebody calls and asks for prayer or you get an email or you get a phone call or an accident where you're scraping the ice and you need to take a break. You know, like maybe those could be ways that Jesus is calling you to stop and to pay attention to right, what's right in front of you and to serve them. So, that's one way of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it, if we think back of Bartimaeus, on Bartimaeus' life, when he got his sight, he also got a kingdom vision. And when God opened his eyes, he didn't go back to his corner to beg. He followed him. And he couldn't get enough of looking at Jesus. So when God calls us, when he gives us sight, when he answers that prayer that you're finally bold enough to ask for, what if that is also to like launch you into that vision of following Jesus in a whole different way? Um, so a couple encouragement verses I have for you. Um, Isaiah 58, 9. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer, and you will cry out. And he will say, here I am. 5811, the Lord will always guide you. He will satisfy you in the sun-scorched land and strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. I just read that. So if you will indulge in a 10-minute video, <laughs> um, I think that this is a great application to kind of just show both of like, if we're asking God to give us a kingdom vision, when we're asking your will be done as it is in heaven, your kingdom come, it can look so many different ways. And so this, um, this morning when I heard this devotional, um, I thought, actually, you guys might really enjoy watching this. So many of you may have heard of John Orberg before. Um, and he does a daily devotional, um, like, text right now. And so I've just been subscribed to that. And he's talking about Dallas Willard's book, The Renovation of the Heart, which is a beautiful book. And this, this is about a vision worth living. Let's see if it's going to work. Okay. Is it? Nope. <laughs> okay, our backup plan was to email it to you guys. Yeah. So that might be what we're doing. And we're going to figure out technology. If you guys ever invite me back, yeah. I would still come. Yeah. Okay.
If you go to Jesus and say, Rabbi, my teacher, my pastor, my spiritual leader, my Lord, I want you to X, Y, Z, what would you say? So I'm going to lead us in that kind of prayer and let you be brave enough to ask God for the very craziest thing that you could want today. And may he encourage you to continue to sit with him. Oh God, oh Jesus, you are a Savior who stops. And when we call your name, you say, here I am. And what I love about that is not even just that I can hear your voice, but that you hear mine. And that you are somebody who answers. That you see our whole life in this big span. And maybe there's things that we're just tired of dealing with. We don't want to sit on the side of the road anymore. We don't want to beg anymore. We want to have sight. We want this thing answered. <laughs> and you're our only hope for that, God. So if I could say it out loud, I would say, Jesus, I want, I want, I thank you because you answer. And all the prayers that you are answering right now, we're going to open our eyes and watch and see what you have done, believing that you answer, because when we call, you answer. And that thing is more about us knowing you than the outcome. That answer is more about relationship and kingdom and loving you and loving others. So God, would you birth a vision in our hearts for living out the kingdom? Help us see ourselves the way you see us, that we are loved and seen and known. And may we follow you with whatever vision you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.